We judge. We judge every day. I do it, you do it, she does it, and he does it as well. You were just asked to judge me from a picture, and I can assure you everyone here, based on their knowledge and personal background, judge me differently. We judge ourselves and others every day, but we're often scared to admit it. We're scared to admit it because we fear judgment is negative, it's bad, and we all want to be good people. We want to be accepting of others and ourselves, but that's often not the reality. One day I was walking down the streets of my home country, Italy, with my friend Haley. We were having a conversation and all of a sudden she stopped. She realized that everyone around her was looking at her. I tried to explain to her how normal that was. That was just part of the Italian culture to observe people. I explained to her my perspective on how Italian people think, how they judge, and what they look for in a person. She commented back and told me that I was doing the exact same things. I was shocked because for the first time I was faced with the reality that I was judging others like others were judging me. In that moment, I realized that those Italian attitudes, they just came naturally to me. I was judging a person based on their physical appearance and it was something normal to do and something that I experienced at a very young age. Growing up in a country known for its architectural beauty and culture, it will come as no surprise that Beauty was and still is an important aspect of the Italian flair. I remember comparing myself to others for the way we looked and especially our body types. I remember not feeling and not seeing myself as the normal slim kid, the athletic type, or the one that went unnoticed. And for years I tried my best to change that. I was brought up in a northern city called Bergamo in Italy uh, with my two siblings and my two amazing parents. As Italians do, I spent a lot of time with my extended family, and I loved every minute of it. I remember noticing that from my mom's side, I was very similar to my grandma and my four aunts. We were all very curvaceous and all trying to fight it. I witnessed my mom, my aunts, my sister, and many other women in my life go through many different diets. No matter their size, diets were just normal, something we all had to do and all we could talk about. I started to talk about diets with my friends at the age of 11 and started dieting at the age of 13. Every year I would go on two diets, each time losing half of what I planned to lose, and each time being happy, but then, needing, then feeling the need to lose more. No matter how much I was losing, it was never enough for me to feel normal and be normal. I was insecure about myself compared to others because I couldn't wear the same outfits. They wouldn't fit me. And especially where in the summertime, wearing a bikini was a no-go. I always thought that being thin would make my life so much easier. And not achieving thinness made me feel inadequate. I wasn't unhappy. I was just in a state of incomplete happiness. This changed when, at the age of 17, I moved to Ohio for an exchange program. In that year, I met the friend of a lifetime and part of my now family. I experienced the American life, the American school system, which I've dreamt for, for in my entire life. It was my first year that I didn't diet, and diets were not mentioned in my group of friends. I could see and notice everyone around me complimenting each other spontaneously, something completely foreign to him, for me. And for the first time, I was doing the same to others. In that moment, I realized something was different from the way I acted in the United States from Italy. All they could really notice was my Italian accent and um, my culture. My size wasn't really an issue. You can imagine how heartbroken I was when I needed to go home and leave behind all my friends and my newfound freedom. What I did bring with me was a lot of weight uh, that I knew I had to get rid of as soon as I got home. Here, I was at my heaviest. I weighed 89 kilograms, felt happy and great um, just two weeks before leaving the United States, but I had my heaviest. As soon as I got home, I uh, went shopping with my mom and my sister, and I was really quickly brought back to the rea Italian reality. If you're not thin, you don't fit. In only four shops in four hours, I was told that my, my size wouldn't, wasn't catered there. The funny part is, I never told them what my size was. 
just by looking at me, they assumed that what my size was, and in one second decided nothing in the store would fit me. Many of you may have experienced something similar to me, being judged by the way you look or your character in less than a second. That day, I was angry and, and sad because knowing that two weeks prior, I was completely happy, had a great time, and didn't need dieting to fit in. As you might guess, I went on another diet, lost all the weight, felt happy about it, but at the same time, I was very unhappy inside. The following three years um, were very dif difficult for me. I went through many um, family difficulties and big life changes, which ultimately brought me here to London in 2016. The following two years were completely life-changing. On July 14th of 2018, I participated in this body positive manifestation, which is called the Real Catwalk. Myself and another 115 people from all, all, all backgrounds, sexes, religion, ethnicities, body types and abilities, walked together to redefine beauty standards. On that day, we had to walk in our bikinis in a public space and show skin, show curves, show bones, show color and show love. For the first time, I could see myself. I was proud of myself, I was confident in myself, but most importantly, I was in love with the diversity around me. Being part of this body positive manifestation made me realize something even more important. Size shouldn't be a determining factor of a worth, happiness, or sadness. It shouldn't exclude one person from feeling um, insecure about their bodies. Size shouldn't matter, period. On that day, judgment have left my mind because on that day, insecurities have left me. The newfound confidence and acceptance made me um, open up to new possibilities. I, follow, I finally followed my dream to becoming a plus size model, still trying, um, and I was portrayed in the nude by a wonderful artist, and I'm here today talking to you. Over the past two years, I had many opportunities to discuss about judgment and to talk about what is judging and the feeling of being judged. I connected online with many people from the body positive community, but also just connecting with people from the world. And we discussed our relationship with our bodies and the social pressure we have to change. The past winter holidays, the community made a point about um, enjoying this time of year while being mindful that the way one's feel and look is valid, it shouldn't be explained to or questioned by anyone. In the past, I had many conversations with my family about the way I look, how I relate to my body, but the latest one had me think a little bit more. During Christmas, I was at home with my family, we were having lunch, and my brother asked me, are you happy with your body? This question triggered many emotions and thoughts, and at the time I answered very frantically and a bit angry um, that I was happy with my body. I couldn't understand how my physical appearance was connected to my happiness, despite me thinking this way my whole life. I couldn't even understand why my brother asked me this question. He knew my story, my past, my new experiences, and my newfound mindset about the physical appearance. I was in disbelief, but recently I decided to talk about this with my brother and confronted this misunderstanding. And by confronting it, I realized that I was quick to judge. Him asking this question wasn't to hurt me or judge me in any, in any negative way. It was just him trying to understand how I relate to my body. He asked the question because my personal experience was something foreign to him. My biased and quite judgy understanding of his question made a possible teaching moment into an argument filled with misinformation. This was my second time facing my own judgment that I can recall. Um, this conversation with Haley and my brother made me realize that my judgment was fueled by my own insecurities. I started to question, how can I stop this? How can I stop this pattern? I think you probably all know, we cannot stop judgment. It's natural and it's happening. But what we can do is learn from it. Learn the way we judge and why we feel the need to judge. I believe judgment can be reframed through communication and self-reflection, especially about the negative judgment experienced towards ourselves and others. The first step is to admitting that we judge, 
to recognize it. The second step is to self-reflect our own processes of self-judgment and start asking questions like, why are you judging yourself this way and what is that you're actually judging? Once we become aware of our own judgment, we then can start understanding the way we judge others. And where is this judgment coming from? Is it stereotypical? Is it educated? Or is it a response of a fear or our insecurities? These questions are only a way to evaluate our self, our self-judgment and our emotion and insecurities that often we project onto others. Those reframing processes are not a one-time activity. They are ongoing process of reprogramming our instinctive behavior. Everyone here has a story, their struggles and victories, but we all have in common one thing. Internal and external judgment exist and sometimes makes it harder for us to navigate life. Recognizing my own judging behavior made me realize I still had a lot of work to do. I needed to work on myself, on my self-esteem, self-love, acceptance, and confidence. I needed to observe people, and instead of judging them without knowing their story, I needed to educate myself more, understand what's underneath what I can see. If you ever start judging yourself for your physical appearance, your work, your character, anything really, try to focus on it for five minutes. Take that time to analyze your judgment, questioning it, and learning what is triggering it. And after the five minutes, move on for the day. Don't let your judgment dictate what you do in your life and how you live your life. I let that be my destiny for many years, but and if I didn't change my attitudes, you would have never met me today. Thank you.